It's Bourbon Night, and it's an uncorking. Hello again, everyone. I am Chad. I'm Sarah. Sarah, what do we got? We have Jefferson's Reserve Pritchard Hill. Pritchard Hill. Yes. So Pretty what, pumped about this one. Yes. Well, of course, we've had this before. Yes, we, we know, have. We know that we like it, but we are uncorking a new one here. The story behind this is it is an eight-year-old Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey. Yes. That is then finished for an additional... Is this annoying? They can't hear. <laughs> Which is finished for an additional 12 months mm -hmm. in freshly dumped um, Pritchard Hill Cabernet, uh, casks. Cabernet, Cabernet Savion mm -hmm. casks from the Chapelet Winery. Winery in yep. California. So what they do is they dump their wine, then they send them across the U.S. to mm -hmm. Kentucky, and uh, the, the, eight -year -old. The, the Jefferson's crew takes the eight-year-old Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, puts it in those freshly dumped barrels, and then puts it out in what they call a hot box mm -hmm. um, out there right outside of their distillery. And it gets to be like 100 plus degrees in there and yeah. stuff, so it's, yeah. it really sweats. Yeah, um, yeah. so that the bourbon seeps into the wood of the, the cask. So in and out. Gets those flavors. Gets the flavors of the and, Cabernet cask. I mean, you can probably see this is a little bit more like reddish color, mm -hmm. so um, this comes from, you know, the color that the Cabernet imparts on the bourbon, Yeah, which is pretty cool. And it's not just a, a hard and fast 12 months. The uh, master blender, Trey Zoller, goes out there and he'll, he checks on them right. throughout the time to yeah. you know, see if it's maturing. Just checking in. Faster or, you know, or what if it needs he to come out a little. He just wants an excuse to drink. <laughs> he just wants it. to drink some. I don't know. <laughs> Can you blame him, though? No. And, um, no. I, I, the thing I like about this is, like, I'm a huge red wine fan and I'm a huge bourbon fan. And it's really cool whenever you get to have a little bit of both. Um, so that's why I'm just, I have always been partial to this one. Let's go with a quick here. Oh. Nice. Nice. Not bad. Um, I've been, I used to think I just didn't like, uh, sure. I'll pour you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I just used to think I didn't like wine finished bourbons. So for a while I just kind of stayed away from them. But come to find out that it's really the type of wine. Yes. Not so big on the port wine. Uh, but this one being a Cabernet, that's why when I eventually tried it, I was surprised. I was like, oh, it's not Oops, just the whole wine finished category in general. It's, right. it's the type of wine. Yeah, I'm more of like a yeah Pinot Noir Cabernet type of finished wine. You know with the bourbons and not so much the port this is like one of my favorite things to drink at night i mean not every night because you know <laughs> who drinks every night but um <laughs> no I, I love this one i think you definitely get like a lot of the cherry fruit you know flavors that come from the wine um on the nose of this yeah but it doesn't lose the classic always, bourbon smell, mm -hmm. either. You still get the vanilla coming yeah. through that Crumble, too. Yeah, caramel, vanilla, all the typical, all the typical things that you get from the bourbon, but you also get that wine influence. And I like some wines too, you know, not as much as you. No, I I love some wine. Yeah, but I like a, a, a nice red wine or even some white. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but uh, all right. All right then. Cheers. Let's dive in. Yeah. I mean, again, the fruitiness, the cherry. But not like an overwhelming like fruitiness. It's like a very dark fruit that complements the bourbon and the depth of the bourbon. Yeah, um, like a dark cherry. I think, yeah. And then well. it, it still kind of has, I mean, you still get the vanilla and it just rounds it out really nicely in the wood. But if you don't like wine, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if to say like, this is for everyone. This may not be for everyone. If you are a just a hard and fast bourbon drinker, then I don't know, some people are elitist. I believe that this is really cool because it takes what is already a great bourbon and a great process and expands it just a little bit into what you can do with it. So, Yeah, I agree. Um, I like that you get more of a finish of bourbon than you do wine on mm -hmm. the back end. Yeah. I like that. So, you know, what you're getting more up front is kind of that wine influence, but at the end of it, when it's just still sitting on your tongue, is that bourbon, mm -hmm. which, you know... Which is what I like. It's just so nice and smooth, and mm. it is very smooth, very easy to drink. This is very 90, easy to drink. Ninety point two proof, um, so it's you know a nice. That's probably my biggest complaint about it is that it goes down so easy. <laughs> I yeah have finished a bottle or two. So. Well, super easy to drink. I think this would be you know something they could really easily pair with a meal, mm -hmm. you know? Uh, well, I don't know, what would you, you're the chef, what would you pair this with? Oh gosh, I mean, what red wine? Ooh, I'd be intrigued to try this with like some steak. 
Okay. I was kind of thinking fish. Really? Because normally yeah. I would pair like a white wine with a fish. Well, see, I don't know anything about wine and it's food okay. pairings, but... Or this could go nicely with like a pasta with a red sauce. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Oh, I could get down on that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds pretty good right now, it actually. Does really I don't like some spaghetti meatballs. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And yeah. you know, um, what's intriguing is they do like a, they do several different finishes. And I really, I don't like rum at all, but they do a Gosling's rum finished uh, bottle and it is so good. Like it's all the best flavors of rum which you didn't think that there were, but it's like extra caramel, extra vanilla, like bananas, and it's almost like a bananas foster when they like flambe oh. the rum with the bananas and the sugars, mm. and it's like that flavor with the bourbon. And mm-hmm. I never thought I would like something like that until I tried it, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is really good. I don't even like rum, so. Yeah, I mean, kudos to the company for trying things like that, you know, with the rum, the wine cast. Of course, they weren't the first to do the wine, but no. you know, the... Uh, different things like that. Um, you know, the Ocean, which we really like. Does Jefferson's a very experimental company, and you know, like the Wood Experiments mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Put them out there. They're not always a hit. Every experiment can't always win. Right. But um, you know, this one I am enjoying. I think this is a winner. Yeah, this one's a winner. For me personally, this is a winner. Yeah. And, and if about... you have a wine drinker who wants to get into bourbon, I think this would be like a really cool way to start them. Yeah, bring so. them over to the bourbon side. Correct. Wine's fine. This is the bridge bourbon's between. Bourbon's better. <laughs> yeah. Wine's fine. Bourbon's better. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is this is the bridge, and at about. 79, 75. Yeah. If you like wine finished bourbons and you know it. <laughs> Mid 70s. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's it's a little bit more of an investment, but yeah, exactly. If you like wine, you like bourbon, I think, I think. this is going to be a safe bet for you. Is it worth the money? Um, I would say so. I have to say for sure. Oh. Um, because recently I've had um, bottles that I invested quite a bit more money in. It did not turn out to be good at all. In fact, I hate them. <laughs> um, so. How do you really feel? <clears throat> I don't like it. No. So you really never know. And that's the thing. Like, people yeah. are like, oh, well, I'd pay a hundred and something dollars for that. But do you ever really know? I mean, value is subjective. Right. But, exactly. Um, for me, I will continuously, like, will I drink this every night? No. But it's a great treat for when I do want to drink it. Um, and I will probably always try to have a bottle around just because I enjoy it so much. But. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. I would say if you are on the fence about wine, then probably get this in a bar first, just mm-hmm. just to make sure. Because, you know, like I said, I don't like port wine, and I didn't like uh, bourbon finished in port barrels. So if you don't like Cabernets, get it at a bar first. Right. We don't know. want to steer you wrong. Right. If that's your preference, to each his own, so. Yeah, absolutely. But, you know, from a casual wine drinker's perspective, almost said perspective, <laughs> From a casual wine drinker's, now I can't even say the word, perspective. perspective. I still messed it Good up. Good lord. Still messed it up. Perspective. Perspective. Mm-hmm. Woof. Um, I recommend. So, there you go. It has a casual wine drinker's... Approved. <laughs> stamp of approval. So, yeah. No, it's good. I enjoy it. Yeah. Well, that'll do it for us, huh? It will, because I'm out of bourbon. I know. Well, I, I can always that. refill, but... True. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. You're welcome. And until next time, drink more bourbon. Mm-mm, bourbon down in my belly. Tastes so good. Warms me up. <laughs>